Greetings, lords and ladies, Kaiser here, and welcome to another episode of our Mountain Blade Gekko Kujo Daimyo Edition Let's Play. Now then, when last we left off, we had finally declared war on the Ashikaga Shogunate and had already drawn first blood by taking over Nara. Now, we do have a massive army of about, I don't know, three, between three and four thousand units altogether over here. So, this campaign shouldn't be too, too hard. All that's really gonna be probably be somewhat harder is uh, the actual maneuvering of this huge army and the constant necessity of telling all of our lords to keep following us because they are apparently complete and total goldfish as you know and just have a memory span of about 15 seconds and just leave us within a single day of campaigning. <sighs> Alrighty then. Now then, like I said last time, the next target will be Kawachi Castle. Now, Kawachi Castle has a hundred defenders, so this is gonna be a total massacre in there, probably. Next will be Sakai, and after that, we're gonna head back for Kyoto. Now, I'm not sure if all three are gonna be able to be done in this single episode, but we'll at least do Kawachi and Sakai, that is for sure. I was kind of wondering if I should stop the siege for now, and, uh, oh... Well, hello there, Rurakami. Nara has been besieged by Lord Harada of the Ashikaga Shogunate. Aha! Sure, I'll take Kawachi first and then focus on you, alright? Alrighty. Morning. Morning. Alright. Lead our soldiers in an assault. Huh. This is somewhat... Oh god, what is this? Why? Excuse me? Was this supposed to be, like, some sort of a... An ambush? I mean, it's interesting. I won't say it's not, but a little bit confusing. They just dropped some units outside. Wait, are they... Oh, now they're backing off? Place our archers on that side and just start firing at them, even as they're retreating. So, something's going on weird here. They spawned outside, so I thought at first that it might have been some sort of, like, uh, an ambush maneuver? Like, I didn't think the AI is capable of that, and I'm being proven correctly, because they're already backing off. You know what, with the huge amount of units that we have, I'm pretty sure that we can just storm in with our infantry and cavalry units. Uh, while supporting them with our archer units. Uh, you can, of course, spread out a little bit more. And fire at the enemy. Yeah, no, come on, yeah. give me my... there we go. Oh, they killed him. Damn it! <laughs> that was the guy I was gonna go for. Oh, uh, they're... Wait a minute. What is going on over here? They're spawning outside? Excuse me? I mean, fine. Archers, yeah, just shoot at them. But this is a mess. This is probably not what the... Modder intended to happen, but... Damn. I mean, if the other cursed layout is is like the hardest layout of all, I'm pretty sure that this is the easiest one because it's just spawning units outside, allowing us to just massacre them while they're trying to swim over to us. Meanwhile, our infantry units are just wrecking house within the walls. But they're starting to come out for whatever reason. Uh, I, I am confusion. I'm legit confused what is going on here. Uh, well, one of our guys got taken out over there, but... I mean, hello, archers, are you already done, or...? Oh, because these guys are now running around here, the archers can't aim. Nice, lovely. What is going on? Where are those guys going? Are they gonna appear on like on the other side of the wall or something? Something went horribly horribly wrong over here. 
Well, I'm out of ammo. Archers just come over here. Pretty sure you not. Nah. Wait. Is the enemy... Where is the enemy coming from? I think the enemy should be coming from the other side as well. So just move. No, not into the tree. Not into the tree, I say. What the... So there are invisible walls over here, even. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, and now our guys are going back in because... I'm so confused. Okay, so I have to go inside and check what the actual heck is going on with this layout. Because I thought those guys were going around and around. I thought they spawned outside, but apparently, I don't know, is there a gate there and they just had to go all the way around to actually get here? Didn't mean to click those commands, but just wanted to get rid of the... Okay, so this is how it looks in from the inside. Okay, yeah, so the enemy did spawn on the outside, had to move all the way around the wall to re-enter their own stronghold. And then fight us over here. <laughs> we keep finding such holes in this mod. Oh well, I mean... No mod is perfect, no game is perfect either. Uh, I'll see you in just a little bit, everyone. Alrighty, there we go. So, Kawachi Castle has been taken. Now, I'm just thinking, do we go for Sakai immediately? Or rather, for Lord Kosaka? Or do we go immediately back to Nara, defend it, then attack Kyoto? Um, let, let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah, he's still coming over here. All right, well, you're an idiot. Hello? Hi? Have you met our army? Uh... I mean, I know we get along, but if you think that I'm not gonna attack you... Then you got another thing coming. This was... This was weird. Strange, and... Kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> Alright, position our units. Like so. How many does each side have? We have about twice their amount. Alright, prepare to fire. I said... Eh, never mind. Right, so, back to the history. Last time when we left off, um, I had just mentioned how Hideyoshi was moving on to Kyushu. And once he actually moved on to Kyushu, he moved in force. And what I mean is, the Toyotomi army of 60,000 men landed on Kyushu, followed by 90,000 additional Mori units uh, under uh, uh, Mori and Kobayakawa troops, Topped off by yet another 30,000 men under the personal command of Hideyoshi the following month. Alrighty, so we're fighting down there. Let's send our cavalry in, clean up a little bit. And I believe that with our archers we will be moving onto this hill right here. Probably much better. Archers right over here. This hill right here. They'll be able to fire on the enemy as soon as they spawn. Boom. Get him. Got him. Alrighty, well then. The Shimazu almost immediately started retreating, and the Mori Toyotomi army almost leisurely strolled across the island, taking control of the lands and clans formerly conquered by the Shimazu. The only resistance the Shimazu really offered was at Sendai River. Within the next few days, the Shimazu Yoshihisa appeared before Hideyoshi with a shaved head and surrendered. Now Hideyoshi once again showed leniency, and while he made Yoshihisa retire in favor of his younger brother, Yoshihiro, he allowed the Shimazu to retain control over Satsuma, Osumi, and Southern Hyuga. 
Now then, Hideyoshi spent some time in Kyushu and there acquired his, uh, acquainted, sorry, not acquired, acquainted himself with Christianity and made the first step in quelling what he saw as a destabilizing element. He issued the Christian Expulsion Edict, which forced all missionaries to leave Japan. Next, Hideyoshi looked towards the Hojo and other northern daimyo, still not under his control. So these were basically the Date, Mogami, and Nanbu among them. Hideyoshi had invited Hojo Ujimasa to Kyoto, and that was of course an invitation that Ujimasa unsurprisingly just ignored. Let's see, are we really just chasing one more? Good guy. Get him already. <laughs> now, while preparing for the move to Kanto, Hideyoshi continued administering Japan. In 1585, he issued the most... The most likely... Most controversial... Sorry, English. The likely most controversial um, and far-reaching edict. The so-called Great Sword Hunt. Later in 1591, he followed that up with the edict on changing status. Essentially, what he may, uh, what he did by doing this was he ensured that no farmers could really be um, armed in rap uh, rapidly. So essentially what he did w with this was also lower the strength of the separate daimyo from being able to raise Ashikaga units very quickly. With the edict on changing status, what he did there was essentially he locked everyone in their uh, class, basically if you want to call it that. Essentially, that meant that if you were a samurai, if you were a warrior, you were not even allowed to go until your own land. Like, that was now the job of your farmers. And the farmers, of course, they were doomed to stay as farmers. There was no longer a possibility to uh, just arm themselves into Ashigaru units, into anything, really. So farmers were farmers. Um... Warriors were warriors. Merchants were, of course, merchants. The lowest of the low in the eyes of the samurai. Um, and, yeah, by doing all of this, he made sure that there could never again be another Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Now, let me just finish off this battle quickly. Uh, this class freeze really just stayed, I mean, the administering elements that Hideyoshi had put in place just created a foundation on which, why are these Mori units, uh, on which, <laughs> hey, what the actual, uh, let me out of here, let me the heck out of here. Move out of my way, man. Men. Ooh, that was... <laughs> actually jumped on my chair. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, it laid the foundation for the uh, edicts and other administrative um, things that Tokugawa did afterwards. Um, and the class freeze really stayed with, uh, the, with Japan all throughout the Tokugawa lands, uh, sorry, Tokugawa times. That was one of the, um, biggest reasons why the, uh, samurai and whatnot started rising up. Because, frankly speaking, the merchants and artisans were starting, or rather, not even the artisans, sorry, the merchants were starting to become the wealthiest class of all of the classes. Uh, now, the reason that the merchants were seen as the lowest of the low was because they didn't do anything uh, to gain their uh, to gain their wealth. They didn't do anything to gain their power. Essentially, the way that the Japanese saw it, the merchants were um, 
the merchants were getting wealthy off the work of other people. Which, you know, they're not exactly wrong. I mean, the merchants found a way to buy cheap from some people and sell cheap, uh, and sell, uh, n not cheap, sorry, sell, um, more expensive, ver, so, wait, cheaper, what's the other way around? Cheap, expensive, yeah. Basically, they uh, sold for a higher price. There we go. <laughs> Let me just turn the other way there. Um, and yeah, they essentially did nothing. Like, they didn't put any hard work or anything into cultivating their own wealth. That's how the Japanese saw it. And that is why they hated them. And they hated even more the fact that the merchants started, you know, earning more and more. Um, much more than the samurai whose class, thanks to Hideyoshi, was now locked. Like, they could not do anything to increase their uh, stipend. Now, granted, their stipend or stipend, sorry, I, whichever you prefer, I've heard both once again, just like with pole arms. <laughs> uh, their stipend was. Um, was locked like they were getting a steady amount of cash yes but they couldn't increase that amount at all by doing anything much really um all right so what's the next step do we go for sakai do we go for the defense of nada i think we go for the defense of nada first the amako all right we're not at war with the amako 52,000. Nice. Alright, let me just see how many units. Kohoku has been raided by Lady Yamagata of the Ashikaga Shogunate. Ooh, that is the entire Ashikaga army right there. Well, 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 we're definitely going to the defense of Nara, and after that, crushing Kyoto. Hopefully. Alright, well, two lords decided to go the other way for whatever reason. One of them is coming back. Yoshiaki! Wait, you're just a lord right now, huh? <laughs> Morita, Harada. No, that's those are quite large amounts of units right there. They have. Are they running? No, following Lord Nakahara. Um, where is Lord Nakahara? Did he just arrive on the battlefield and they're trying to follow him now, or what? Okay, so now I'm even more confused as to what's going on because. This guy's traveling to Kyoto. That guy's following Lord Nakahara. This one's following Lord Harada. This one's following Lord Endo, who's behind us, so he's, what, just gonna pass us? Oh, now they're all running from us. Ugh. I kind of want to fight, though. Following Great Lord Otogawa. Really now? Now he's running from us. Following Lord Endo. I mean, I'm absolutely fine with you attacking Lord Endo. Ah, uh, why are you guys so slow? I need you guys in this fight. What is this? Nagako. Oh, she didn't even notice. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Intelligence, surgery, wound treatment. There we go. And she... Intelligence as well. Though no pathfinding, no trade. Oh, good God. What do we put your points into now? Uh, writing? No, that would make no sense for her. Athletics is already on max. I... She's a firearms expert, so... Eh... I don't know. I'll just put it into surgery. I believe surgery is the most important one out of all of these three, so... Uh, though party healing speed, that's pretty good as well. But I'd prefer not losing less units in every combat. For starters. Uh, no, 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 no. Not... You know what, I'll just... What am I doing? <laughs> I'm just gonna do it like this. One into each. There. And no archery. But you do have a polearm. And two-handed weapon. There we go. 
Some units are ready to upgrade. Who is Sugi officer, veteran on a bushy, trained order spearman, gunner, elite order. What? I know. I know. I should have probably just put him into one of our fiefs, like Nada, for instance. But uh, nah. Alrighty. Following Great Lord Otagao, please do. By all means. Or, yeah, attack Lord Endo. Go. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it, I say. It's late night. Is he following me or no? He's traveling. <gasps> That's Herr Mr. Shogun right there. Everybody's heading to Kyoto. I mean, we were gonna be heading to Kyoto anyway, so... They're making our trip all the shorter. Oh! Lord Nakahara! This explains why I couldn't see him on the map, but... Follow me. Wait, which... What do we give you? Obama, is that yours? No. Ichijodani. So the other two came to us, I believe. At least I would think so. Did the Obama guy... Yeah, the Obama guy's here, Lord Endo. And Chiba came as well. This is the only guy that didn't come. <laughs> Alright, uh, so I... Wish to not fight on a bridge. Maybe this will not be on the bridge? Joined on the enemy side. Good. So another person was actually pulled into this battle. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Hoo ha, yeah. That comes in arms against me. They know me as Great Lord Otogawa. I said this only once. Surrender or die. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good number of units. Good guy. Why is it still so dark? This is a weird place, but let's try our best with what we've got. Yep, yep, I see smoke from the shots. Let me just move away. Move away. Wait a minute. Where are they going? Who are they attacking? There we go. Mounted Hojo officers down. Come on, don't miss. Stop missing. Stop missing! I mean, these rocks are pretty helpful to us. Ow! Son of a... Get him! There. I guess we're gonna have to redeploy a little bit, because they're coming from this side, or rather this way, for whatever reason. Did I get hit, or did somebody else get hit? I'm being... Uh, I am terribly confused right now. What are you, Shinobi? Experience Shinobi, yup. Oh, uh, where the heck do I position our archers then? Here? Like this? Perhaps? Infantry back, cavalry back. Alright, yeah. Good. Better. It seems we found a better position for our guys. Alrighty! So, now that that's cooled off a little bit. Um, last we left off, I believe Hideyoshi had, there we go, Hideyoshi had enacted a few edicts, a few far-reaching edicts, and edicts that really the Tokugawa regime simply build off of later. Come on, oh god, my horse is almost dead. Got him. Alright, so! Oh. Didn't even realize there was another enemy here. Archers are doing their thing. 
What? Did somebody shoot? Son of a... Gun. And now I shot my guy's horse. I don't know if it was you, it probably wasn't, but I'm gonna act like it was because you have a bow and arrow and I'm pretty sure an arrow hit my horse. Alright, is this it for the first bat? Yeah, looks like it. Ouch. Okay. Kinda hoping that we don't have to chase that guy. This is enough? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So yeah, in 1590, Hideyoshi moved to bring the last Japanese provinces under his control. Now, the Hoja refused to bow, even though Hideyoshi, in a letter to Ujimasa, um, hinted that the Hoja could retain most of their Kanto holdings. The Hojo were kind of counting on their ties with the Tokugawa to help them in this, com uh, in this upcoming conflict. But, just in case the Tokugawa decided not to honor those ties, uh, the Hojo decided... Just a moment... ...to withdraw into the heavily defended Odawara Castle. That, like that, like that, like that. There we go. Any cavalry units? Did you have cavalry units? I didn't check what kind of horse I have. I'm kind of hoping I still have the same one. So the Toyotomi army had assaulted the Hojo from three sides. The Tokugawa marched along the Tokaido coast, the Sanada and Uesugi united force into Kozuke and the Chosokabe and others landing in Izu. Now the Hojo had hoped that the sheer size of the Toyotomi army would work against them as the logistics required to feed such a force is quite considerable. However, Hideyoshi had come prepared and hired logistical experts, and thanks to that, the Siege of Odawara almost began to look like a festivity, really. Um, you see, Hideyoshi had sent for performers, allowed markets to be established to cater to the men, uh, and even allowed his generals to send for their wives. Why are you guys stuck in here? N why am I stuck in here? Alright, horse is stuck, but I'm not. We're good. We're good. We're Gucci. Somebody kill this guy. Ah, I missed. <laughs> I wanted to do like a jump hit or something, like a jumping maneuver. But he negated me. Cavalry strike. Attack these guys before they get to our archers. Meanwhile, you guys spread out. Kind of forgot to do that. That was my bad. Get this guy. No, this guy. Yeah, that guy. And get me this horse. Get me this... Ah! Okay, fine. No horse. No horse for me. Uh, all of this... All of this that uh, Hideyoshi did was for the sake of keeping morale high. And this was probably looking like the most easygoing siege in the history of Japan, if you ask me. Now, the siege lasted for about three months, and of course a few attacks were ordered, but they didn't really achieve much. And with no end in sight and the supplies starting to dwindle, the Hojo finally surrendered. The gates of Odawar had opened and Ujimasa committed seppuku. Now, perhaps it was due to Ieyasu's intercession, but Ujinao was actually spared. Guys, guys, you, you, you let one through. You, you let one through. I won, though. Uh, damn it. So, yeah, this just became an... Uh, an all-out attack. Oh, good god. Okay, so this map is just not good because a lot of our units get stuck. 
take the field 414 good god are they really only feeling like 14 units at, i mean 40 or 50 units at a time please don't tell me that's the case this one's just as bad because of the river come on we didn't we move far away from the river I mean, I'm just gonna position our archers there, our infantry there, our cavalry there, and let's see what happens. Technically speaking, it is a hill, so our archers and gunners should have the upper hand. Right. Elite Oda Skirmisher. Well, now I feel a little bit bad for disbanding my own. Can't really see what's going on over there, but I'm kind of hoping that you guys do. And you can continue firing. Any cavalry units on the side of the enemy? There are a few. Attack those guys, please. Alright, good, 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 good. You're Gucci. You're Gucci. You're Gucci Gucci. No, not staying closer. What? Spread out! Did I actually command them to stand closer the last fight? Oh, I misclicked. What are those? G Samurai, I think? Alright, send them in. <laughs> I mean, if this is just gonna be this kind of slugfest with them sending in 60 units at a time, I'm just gonna auto... Uh, auto resolve these battles. And I can't really increase the size of the battles either to make it so that more of the enemy units spawn. Are you guys gonna be able to get them or not? Alright, so in the end an arrow got him somehow. There we go. Let's take our katana out. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that considering the amount of units that we've already knocked out, our prisoner holds will be full. And it's just gonna get worse, isn't it? Like, less and less units are gonna be spawned considering the um, advantage will just build up more and more. I can't reach! Are you kidding me? Can I reach with this? Okay, maybe, maybe this was not the best of ideas. Somebody else, come in here and help me! I can't hit him from behind! Good god, my horse is dead again, almost. Oh, come on. Did we just flip the map or something, or what? What are these boulders? They're annoying. <laughs> I know, right? Kaiser complaining about a map? Imagine that. Alright, one more. No, two more. How many did they spawn? About 80 or 90. How many did we spawn? About the same number, actually. But good god. Can we make this more rapid? Yeah, 90. Exactly 90. This is just gonna... What if I do this? Your casualties. 25, but which ones of those are actually my casualties, I wonder? Anything with Oda? Okay, Oda. Skirmisher, that's not mine. Marksman, that could have been mine. Spearman, could be mine. Uh, the enemy, on the other hand, 326. Yeah, okay, the, the, this is much faster. <laughs> with the amount of units that we have, honestly, auto-resolve is probably the best way to do this right now. Uh, at least we're not going to be slugging through 
battles like we would otherwise. Yeah, we probably got the best ones. Let's just let's pretend we got the best ones. Wait, what is? Oh, okay. Ah, uh, book, book. I'll give you that if you give me this. Thank you. Leave everything else. Alrighty then. So, who's in Kyoto? Lord Yoshiaki, Lord Lady Toyama, Lord Morita. Those guys are in Kyoto. What are you doing, Chiba? You're gonna. Oh god, he's gonna get himself defeated. It's three. It's two against one. I mean, uh, they outnumbered him two to one. And he's still heading straight for them. Congratulations. Alright. Well, on the other hand, we're just gonna be besieging Kyoto. Hopefully, Chiba gets smart enough to actually turn around and come back to us. But at any rate, guys, the episode has gone on for long enough, I believe. Uh, so I will be making an ending to it right here. Thank you very much for joining me. I have been Kaiser. I will see you guys next time. And until then, as always, Ad Gloriam.